if the terms used by the folks at the Electric Universe are unscientific, their proposals for the workings of the universe border on the supernatural. The members of the Electric Universe imagine a galaxy like a gigantic plasma ball with electric filaments interconnecting the entire universe. After all, they argue, over 99.9% .9 of the matter in the universe consists of plasma. In the electric version, our solar system is just a gigantic cathode ray tube. A cathode ray tube is comprised of five essential parts. A positive anode, which collects electrons, a negative cathode, which collects positive ions, a power supply, and a chamber, which is evacuated and then filled with gas. Some of this gas is ionized, a soup of neutral atoms, positive ions, and negative electrons, known as plasma. The electric universe is above all a plasma universe. In the cosmic cathode ray tube proposed by the electric universe, the sun acts the part of an anode. However, unlike a typical anode, the sun is not connected to a power supply. Indeed, it doesn't even generate its own power. The electricians claim that the sun is not a generator. The sun is a motor. The mathematical establishment holds that the sun is a differentiated object. Gravity compresses atoms towards the center of our star. If we were to travel to the center of the sun, we would find hydrogen turning into helium and, in its old age, into heavier elements such as carbon and oxygen. The electric universe instead proposes that the sun is an undifferentiated ball of gas. The gas molecules inside it are distributed uniformly. The sun is like a balloon or bubble. However, the gas in a balloon is contained by a skin. When the balloon pops, the gases escape. What skin contains the sun's gases? Surprisingly, the electric universe sides with the establishment and asserts that gravity pulls the atoms towards the center of the sun. This is perplexing because the electric universe claims that electricity is 10 to the 39th times more powerful than gravity. So how does the electric universe end up with an undifferentiated ball? In the electric universe model, the gravitational compression runs up against electrical forces originating in the center of the sun, which contain and push back the gravitational field. In electrical universe theory, the graviton balls push inwards, but the electron balls push outwards. It is this balance between the forces of good and evil which guarantees solar structural uniformity. Left to their devices, the interior of the electric sun is irrelevant in the context of heat generation. For all they care, the sun could have a ball of ice in its center. Or not exist at all. The sun is for all practical purposes hollow. Its interior plays no role in electric universe theory. The electric universe claims that the sun's heat is generated at its surface. This is also where the heavier elements we find on Earth are created. The way it works at the electric universe is that electrons from the surrounding plasma sputter the sun's surface and generate the heat that warms the planets. It is machine gunned by loose electron bullets fired from the plasma soup surrounding the sun. In exchange, the sun emits positive ions, protons. These ions accelerate as they leave the sun and form the solar wind that flows into the intergalactic medium. In the solar cathode ray tube, the electrons sputter the sun's surface, and the positive proton balls accelerate outwards. 
Why the proton ion balls accelerate away from the sun is still a mystery. The electric universe alleges that its cosmic cathode ray tube has no cathode. Our solar system is a cathode-less cathode ray tube. The electric universe explains this magical mechanism with an amusing analogy. Their cosmic cathode-less ray tube functions more or less like a direct transmission line discharging continuously to the immediate environment despite that there is no cathode. Well, there are significant qualitative differences between a transmission line and what the electricians propose for the workings of the solar system that should be taken into account. For this we need to understand what a coronal discharge is. Under certain conditions, the localized electric field near an energized conductor can be sufficiently concentrated to produce tiny electric discharge that can ionize air close to the conductors. This partial discharge of electrical energy is called corona discharge or corona. Corona can transform discharge energy into very small amounts of sound, radio noise, heat, and chemical reactions of the air components. A corona discharge is an electrical discharge brought on by the ionization of a fluid surrounding a conductor that is electrically energized. The discharge will occur when the strength of the electric field around the conductor is high enough to form a conductive region but not high enough to cause electrical breakdown or arcing to nearby objects. I have highlighted the words near and small because they are fatal to the electric universe argument. The electric theoreticians have magnified and overstated these coronal discharge effects and made them the foundation of their proposal. Even in the best case scenario, the far-fetched electric universe analogy suggests that the coronal discharges would run along the surface of the sun and not perpendicular to it. For instance, assuming we invoke the particle hypothesis, the filament of a light bulb also emits electron particles to its immediate environment. The current is along the filament and not perpendicular to it, and certainly not far away from it. Why would the positive ions accelerate after the sun emits them if there is no cathode pulling them in? If anything, they should lose speed the farther they are from the sun. More astonishing, the electricians get rid of the cathode ray tube itself. The electric universe theorists have yet to justify the heliosphere that encapsulates the solar system and shields it from the intergalactic medium. The establishment holds that the heliosphere is a product of the sun's magnetic field molding the solar wind. However, just like the electric universe has rejected gravity, it also has no use for magnetism. The electric universe is 100% electric, 100% filaments. The electric universe does it all with plasma. The stars are plasma and they are enveloped in plasma. Unlike the establishment's model, the solar magnetic field is not generated in the interior of the sun. The electric universe's magnetic field consists of unspecified particles that circle the particles that come and go through the solar highway. Again, a phenomenon originating at the solar surface. The planets float in this ionic sea and their magnetospheres are molded into teardrop shapes by the solar currents sweeping past them. You wonder how the electricians differentiate and keep track of their electric, magnetic, and gravitational fields if all three are made of particles. Perhaps they color code them? No. Wrong guess. To the electric universe folk, there are no gravity fields or magnetic fields. Everything, whether electricity, magnetism, or gravity, is made of discrete ionized particles floating around in the form of a gas soup known as plasma. According to the electricians, all of it is plasma. So much so that they propose to rename the magnetospheres of the planets plasmaspheres. 
The icing on the cake regarding the Electric Universe proposal is its closing argument. The Electric Universe Plasma Universe is devoid of plasma. The Electric Universe is above all a plasma universe. Without plasma, the Electric Universe proposal suffers sudden death. For instance, before sputtering, a chamber is typically evacuated below the 10 to the minus 6 tor range and often below the 10 to the minus 10 tor range. The goal is to eliminate as many impurities as possible from the ambient gas. In order to sputter, however, the chamber must later be filled with an inert gas, which takes the pressure back up to 10 to the minus 3 tor level. This gas is ionized, a mixture known as plasma. The highest vacuum ever achieved here on Earth is in the order of 10 to the minus 12, which is about 100 particles per centimeter cube. In comparison, space has been estimated to have a 10 to the minus 16 tor level. The entire Milky Way has been estimated to have an average of one particle per centimeter cube, and intergalactic space has an average of about 40 particles per meter cube. We cannot even achieve such low vacuum levels here on Earth, and we certainly can't do any significant sputtering with such low plasma densities. Therefore, the mighty thunderbolts of the gods that the electric folks claim are responsible for all the filaments in intergalactic space, as well as for the attractive forces and other phenomena of the solar system, are a figment of their imagination. The only reason the electricians invented the alternative hypothesis of plasma is that the establishment could never explain gravity rationally. To recap, the Electric Universe Solar System is a cosmic cathode ray tube that has no power supply, anode, cathode, rays, or tube. To make up for these shortcomings, the Electric Universe offers entertaining mythology and prophetic zodiac symbols. If your thing is astrology, may just want to become a member. Mm -hmm.